The artistic and frame text tools allow you to apply typographic elements to your design work in a number of intuitive ways. They are also both intended for different use cases, so let's look into some of these now. We're going to apply some typographic elements to this poster and flyer design I have here. So first of all, let's select one of our text tools from the tools panel on the left. By default, we can see the artistic text tool, and if we long press on the icon, we can select the frame text tool instead. For this first section, however, let's select the artistic text tool. I have some elements already on the page I've prepared in advance, but I'd also like to add the name of this particular exhibition and add a typographic focal point in the middle too. So with the artistic text tool selected, we can click and drag to create our first center letter. And when doing this, we can also choose the font sizing at the same time via the live preview we're given. Let's go with the letter A for our focal point, and I'll just make some small changes to the positioning with the move tool as well. So with this first letter in place, let's look at the context toolbar, which is now updated to give us some easily accessible settings we can interact with. In this case, I might want to change the font and specific font characteristics, or I might want to change some of the alignment options here too. Now this has been set up, let's add our other text elements. I'll return to the artistic text tool, and I can click and drag again to add a new line of text. So let's add our wording. And this time, let's rotate this text layer using one of the rotation handles, either on the corners or at the top of the layer. I'm also going to duplicate this layer using the shortcut Option Click and Drag on Mac or Alt Click and Drag on Windows. And we can also properly align both of these lines of text in our design using the snapping options we have as well. So I'll turn on snapping in the toolbar and just make sure these are aligned accordingly. Now we have some of our text in place, let's look at the character panel. We can do this by going to Window, Text and Character. And you'll also notice this is where you can bring up the Glyph Browser, Paragraph or Textiles panels too. Alternatively, another shortcut to view the character panel is by utilising the A button found in the context toolbar when you have one of the text tools in use. So with both of these layers selected, you can utilise some of our handy keyboard shortcuts such as Command Shift Comma or Full Stop on Mac and Control Shift Comma or Full Stop on Windows, which will increase or decrease the font size. Or you could use Option and left and right arrow keys on Mac or Alt and left and right arrow keys on Windows to increase or decrease the tracking of your lettering accordingly. And as we use these shortcuts, we can see these changes being updated within the character panel too. But I'll just close this panel for now. And with all of our text elements in place, I just wanted to show you how you might make this central letter integrate into our design more effectively. I'd like to do this by hiding some of the sections of our A shape to give the appearance that the colourful background swirls are weaving in and out of our letter. So firstly, with the layer selected, I'm going to turn the opacity down via the layers panel. And now I can see where I'd like to let the shapes show through. We can quickly achieve this by selecting the pen tool and creating a short line over the same area of our swirl. I'll just change the colour with the colour panel and I'll increase the stroke width to match the shape in the stroke panel. Then I'll change the blend mode of this new curve to Erase. By default this will cut through everything below this curve, but in this case we want to limit this to just our A letter, and we can do this by dragging our curve into the text layer to clip it to the boundaries of that shape. Now I can just make some minor adjustments, and then I can repeat that step again, and use our click drag duplicate shortcut which we used earlier, and make the same visual adjustments to the curve too. I'll do this one last time for the corner section, make some additional small adjustments, and we're ready to move on. Now we can revert back to 100% opacity and see the results. There are quite a few ways to achieve this overlapping effect, using mask layers and raster brushes for example, but I find this method to be particularly flexible for this very clean type of design. Also bear in mind that this is another non-destructive process, as our text hasn't been expanded or baked in, and we could potentially go back and change our lettering altogether. But let's keep our A design and move on to the next section. I've already set up this second artboard with some dividing lines, and our logo is already in place too. 
so we can focus on laying out our lettering. We'll need to select the Frame Text tool over in the Tools panel, and once again we can do this by long pressing the Artistic Text tool to reveal its icon. If we approach our blank area, this time when we click and drag, we are creating our text frame area, instead of indicating what size we want our font to be, as we did with the Artistic Text tool. I'll first head to the Colour panel to make sure we have the correct colour selected. Then we can instantly start to type in this frame. Alternatively, we could use the filler text option we have by right clicking and selecting Insert Filler Text, which is often very handy when you need to plan out how your document will look before you have any text or copy put together. In this case, though, I have my information ready to go, so I'm just going to quickly write that out and fill in the space I have available. Now we have all of our text in place we can go ahead and make any required adjustments to ensure everything is spaced out appropriately. Let's start by referring to our character panel and interacting with some of the settings here. The easiest way you might do this is by clicking and dragging on the icon itself, or we can use the arrows and slider, or enter specific amounts in the input box too. As shown earlier, we can also utilize our keyboard shortcuts again and use Option on Mac or Alt on Windows, along with the arrow keys to adjust the tracking and leading override without having to interact with the character panel itself, which helps us to make our changes very efficiently as well. Finally, you can adjust the dimensions of the text frame itself by interacting with the adjustment handles outside the frame. If we adjust any of the top or side handles, you'll notice that the text itself does not resize and you may find that your text might disappear if it falls outside the frame too. If this does happen, you can use the eye icon, which will allow you to show or hide overflowing text at any point as well. If we did however want to adjust the font sizing and the dimensions of the whole frame, we could use the scale handle found in the lower right hand corner. And when using this option, we can also take advantage of our additional keyboard modifiers shown on the hint line at the bottom of the document window, such as Command on Mac, Control on Windows to scale from the centre of the frame, or Option on Mac and Alt on Windows to ignore snapping and rescale completely freely too. And now we have our finished design. So that was a run through the artistic text and frame text tools in Affinity Designer and some of the additional features you might use to improve your workflow too. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.